Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Brendan Kelleher, and I'm a little bit late to the party, but here's my Alien Romulus review. So, Alien Romulus is directed by Fede Alvarez, and is the seventh movie in the Alien series, and it's set between the events of Alien and Aliens. So I guess that doesn't make it a prequel, it's more of an interquel, so to speak. And it's set on this planet, which is owned by the company Weyland Utani, which is a recurring villain in the Alien series. Well, besides the Alien itself, it's the villain of the Alien series. And it's about this young bunch of workers who are working on this planet and they want to leave. And they can't leave because they don't have enough money and the company is just making them stay. So one member of the group finds out that there's a space station in orbit and it has pods which can take them to a better world. So they steal this spaceship and go up to the station and find that all is not as it seems. And guess what? There's a bunch of aliens on board and lots of aliens start eating people. So basically, pretty much standard for an alien movie. For the record, Aliens, the second movie directed by James Cameron, is my favorite movie of all time. I mean, I've lost count how many times I've seen that movie, you know. And Ellen Ripley is just one of the most iconic characters in not just science fiction cinema, but cinema in general. I mean, if you ask me who my favorite movie character would be tossed up between James Bond, Indiana Jones, Han Solo, and Ellen Ripley would be in that mix. Because she's just so cool. So anyway, back to this movie. There's not much to say about this movie except that it's very creatively bankrupt. Being the seventh movie in the series, and despite the fact that it's a prequel, integral, whatever, it just doesn't offer anything new. And that's just a hallmark of the fact that Disney owned the Alien franchise now. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Alien movies used to be produced by 20th Century Fox. And since Disney took over 20th Century Fox, they basically own everything now. I mean... Disney are like the Borg in Star Trek. They just assimilate and absorb everything in their path. They own Marvel, they own Star Wars, and now they own 20th Century Fox. Well, 20th Century Fox Shutter, they just own it now. And that includes all their properties like Alien and Predator and all them. Look, if you watch my channel, you know how much I hate Disney. The fact that they've destroyed Star Wars and they destroy everything in their path and they're completely and utterly creatively bankrupt. In fact, if you asked me to how to sum up this movie, I would say it's The Force Awakens of Alien movies. I remember coming out with The Force Awakens, the first Star Wars movie that was produced by Disney nine years ago. And it was the first Star Wars movie that I ever hated because it was just completely and utterly creatively bankrupt. There was nothing original. It was just a remake of A New Hope, an unofficial remake of A New Hope. And with this movie, Alien Romulus, I feel that it's basically the same. It's just a rehash of every single Alien movie you've ever seen before. I mean, you have a small bunch of blue-collar workers. They go to an ancient ship or planet or whatever. A bunch of aliens run around and start to kill them. And there's a female crew member who stands apart and defeats them all and escapes. And this movie doesn't just use all the tropes of all the other alien movies. It just basically copies whole scenes, dialogue, and situations from the other alien movies. I mean, it directly references alien and aliens and I don't know why they do this. I get the impression that they want you to think of the other movies. It's like, it's the same thing with The Force Awakens. It was just every single scene in that movie was basically, remember this? Remember this? And I got the same impression watching Alien Romulus. There was whole scenes and dialogue that just made me think, oh look, that's the scene from Alien. That's the character from Alien. That's the dialogue from Aliens. And it was just so annoying. I just don't understand why they do it. If they're going to use an established IP, do something new with it. Look, with an alien movie, you're going to have a certain amount of things that you need to happen. You're going to have to have aliens in it. You're going to have to have a small bunch of survivors. They're basically haunted house movies in space. But my God, stop quoting the other movies. I mean, this movie is set before aliens and repurposes dialogue from aliens. You've probably heard that by now. And it just doesn't make sense if you're going to watch these movies in chronological order. Alien, Alien Romulus, and Aliens. I, I actually wonder if any young person out there now watches these movies in chronological order who now watches Aliens and now recognizes dialogue from Alien Romulus. Okay, I'll talk about what I do like. This movie is technically, like The Force Awakens, technically proficient. It's very well made and didn't even have that massive budget. It has a budget of 80 million, which is relatively low by science fiction cinema standards these days. You can tell that this movie belongs in the alien universe. It has that dark, grungy, 
industrial feel that the other alien movies have and the alien effects are excellent there's a very satisfying reliance on practical effects in this there's a few wonky cgi green screen moments but for the most part this movie is technically very proficient as for the cast the cast are actually generally very good i mean the lead actress i believe her name is kaylee spaney i've never seen her in anything before but she's a decent heroine She's basically the latest in a long line of Ellen Ripley inspirations, or knockoffs if you prefer. And there's this android character played by the actor, the actor's name is David Johnson, and he's a synthetic, like the other synthetics in the series. And he actually gives a very good performance. He's basically playing two characters. The synthetics can have a different personality downloaded. There's a cool scene where they establish that they have these chips in their neck, and you could have one personality put in, and then any other personality put in which is which makes sense for the first part of this movie the actor is playing a character called andy and he's sort of a special needs kind of person he's slightly off and then later in the movie he's get this he gets this other personality and downloaded into him and he's this very highly intelligent mr spock like character but my god the one biggest problem i have with this movie is the fact that they bring back a certain character from alien I'm not going to say who it is. It's all over the internet now at this stage, but I'm not going to reveal it here because this is a spoiler-free review. But they basically use the same technique to bring back an actor from the dead. Like, it's like they did in Rogue One, for example. Like, the way they brought back Peter Cushing to play Grand Moff Tarkin, or they used his likeness and brought him back playing this character. So this character from the first movie shows up, and he's, it's not just a cameo, he's in most of the movie. And I just don't understand why they did this. If I had to guess, they did it for nostalgia's sake. But it just, again, it just makes you think I'd rather be watching the original movie. They had a huge opportunity here to bring back Michael Fassbender's character from the last two movies, Prometheus and Alien Covenant. And they didn't do that. I mean, why spend all that money to use all this CGI? I suppose it must have been cheaper to get Michael Fassbender. I don't know, Michael Fassbender doesn't cost that much, does he? I mean, he's a really good actor, but I mean, they could have brought him back into this and it would have really gotten people interested because the last Alien movie that came out, Alien Covenant, had the character of David and we don't know what happened to him. And since this takes place after Alien, it would have made sense for him to come back. It was just really annoying and it was especially annoying. And I, I actually expected this when I was watching it. They're going to have him repurpose dialogue. There's one particular famous line of dialogue that this character says in the first Alien movie. And again, he says it in this. Then one character quotes a line from Aliens. Probably the best line in Aliens, the most iconic line in Aliens. Get away from her, you bitch! And one character in this movie quotes that. And again, I was going, why would you do that? I mean, I'd rather be watching that movie. That's all it reminded me of. Like I said, the effects are good, the cast are good, and it's for the most part, very well directed. There's a very good scene actually where they're in this kind of zero G environment. They have these, they're using pulse rifles. And you know, the whole problem they have with the alien movies is that, that if you shoot them, if you're on a space station or a ship, it's a bad idea because the acid will eat into the floor and cause depressurization. And they come up with a very unique way to deal with that problem. And the way it's shot, the, the mix of practical and CGI effects, it's very well done. And it was one of the best scenes in the movie. Towards the last, actually the last 20 minutes, it just really goes through the motions. It even copies scenes from Alien Tree in Alien Resurrection. This isn't really a spoiler, but you know that iconic shot of the aliens snarling at Ripley in Alien Tree? They basically do the same thing here. They even rip off Resurrection in the last 20 minutes. I won't say how they do it. There are some shocking moments. If you had to ask me, is this movie scary? If you've never seen an alien movie, you probably would find it scary. But if you've seen enough of these movies, you just know what to expect. There's an old screenwriting rule that if the audience knows more than the characters, there's no suspense. Because if you've seen enough of these movies, you know how the alien life cycle works. You know how the alien works. You know its life cycle. You know if a facehugger gets on you, it'll leave an embryo and an alien burst out. So basically you're spending most of this movie waiting for the characters to catch up with what you know. There aren't actually many aliens in it. There's actually more face huggers than aliens. In fact, this movie has more face huggers in it than any of the alien movies combined. I mean, they're all over the place. And overall, for the most part, it's, it's enjoyable enough. But the repurposed dialogue, the repurposed scenes was really annoying. And I feel if director Fede Alvarez had been left to do his own thing, this movie would have been better. And that's the problem with prequels or intercoals. You have to 
not contradict movies that come after it. And I really do think that the Alien movie series, I mean, personally, I think the Alien movie series should be retired because the first two movies are classics and they can't be bettered. But if the Alien movie series has any future whatsoever, they need to go forward into the future. Because the last movie in the timeline was released over 25 years ago, Alien Resurrection. We have no idea what happened in the Alien timeline after that. And since then, all we've gotten are prequels. They need to move forward. A bit like Star Wars, actually, because they keep jumping back and forth to the timeline. Is Alien Ramos a good movie? It's decent if you've never seen an Alien movie, but if you've seen enough of these movies, you know what to expect. It's very familiar. It doesn't reinvent the wheel, certainly. It's worth watching the cinema if you're looking for a good horror movie. But there are better movies out there. And actually, overall, I have to say, if you want to watch a good Alien movie, stay at home and watch Alien or Aliens. They're really the only Alien movies as far as I'm concerned. So anyway, what did you think of Alien Romulus? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Share this video out there. Click the bell for notifications. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.